we are here for 1970 40 odd years my father wanted a quiet place to retire so white field suited us taste the best part of the rural atmosphere at the same time proximity to the town this house stands in the middle of almost a trapezium we know it existed in 1882 how far before that it was built we don't know the entrance is in the front so actually it can be two different units and we have entrances from the bathroom as you know old fashioned india has to have night soil removers so they has to have a separate entrance from the bathroom from the sides this to be the stables apart from the main hall there are three rooms on either side of the hall three rooms on each wing with two attached bathrooms is very difficult to maintain old houses with this white ant problem you can see everywhere is being eaten up you have to be very vigilant so one of the original structures which is still standing which existed from the time when whitefield was created the owner of mayville in as it was called those days was was a businessman who had his finger in so many different pies if you can see the original records james hamilton had interest in at least 10 12 properties in the whitefield area and all business oriented properties bevel it was one of them and one of the interesting parts we don't have any documented evidence instant churchill was supposed to be a frequent visitor to the inn during his days in Bangalore has reported during the first world war. I think Duma has it that he had a glad eye on the daughter of Mr. Hamilton. In fact, uh, uh, there used to be a place outside the outer circle called the Rocks. It used to be a large stone rock where, till the time that when we moved in here. Uh, It used to be what we call the lovers lane of Whitefield. On those rocks, I had seen a heart structure with an arrow through it, with the initials W S C, which stands for Winston Spencer Church. Unfortunately, that evidence is no longer there because some people blasted those rocks, and now a villa has come up there. Nobody colored could stay overnight in Whitefield, so obviously the occupants of the inn also. Had to be. In fact, even the people who did the cleaning of the bathrooms and all that couldn't stay there. They had to leave in the evenings and come back in the morning. So it was a pure white community. Racism is no longer is not acceptable anywhere. But those days, whites had the dominating force in India. After independence, the village opened up. So it must be 1947 or 8. During the time when it was an inn, people used to come from the city because there were lakes surrounding the area. People used to go boating and fishing. Hunting used to be quite an important sport for quail. This is a letter written by a couple of three ladies who visited Whitefield in 1950. I don't know whether the letter was written in 1950 or it's a copy of the letter which was made in the Gazette in 1950. They are thanking the people who took them to Whitefield and gave them the rest, relaxation, and recuperation that they received here. Talk about the piano solos, the hula dances, the romantic songs sung with excitement and expression. Whitefield, till recently, was a the rural. You could call it really pensioner's paradise. You come to Whitefield to retire. If you wanted to find work, you had to go to Bangalore. So the youngsters had to move out. Subsequently, over the years, all the youngsters either migrated to England, uh, to Australia, or Canada, and gradually the Anglian community died down. Then the industries started coming to Whitefield. Then the big change came with the IT. Park that came here, and all the IT companies started mushrooming in Whitefield, the export promotion zone, 
then life changed completely in my opinion. People started moving in because of these companies and everything, prices started going up, land prices rocketed around, population boomed. There was a time when everybody knew everybody in YT. I take a walk from my house to the main road. Everyone I knew, I was wish everybody hello, hello, hello. Otherwise, sometimes your arm used to ache, but you should reach the main road. But now you don't know anyone. Those days, everybody knew what was happening in everybody's house. Who was having a fight with who? who was. All intimate details were known. But nowadays we don't even know what our neighbor is doing. We don't know whether our neighbor is there or he's gone out of station or what. We don't know anything that's happened. Whitefield was a large family at one time. Like they were so close together. Now to become part of the city, we don't know who your neighbor is. That is the price we pay for progress and development. And people don't like to see such large properties in one person's hand. I don't think there's any other building in Whitefield which is in fact belonging to the old era. So they keep pestering us. Let's do joint development. You also benefit, we also will benefit. Why do you want to keep it like this? It is our history. If you are not aware of your history, you are not a human being. You have to know your roots, where you came from, how the community developed. If you don't preserve something of that, then you are losing your history. What is man without history?